I am Barbara Mikuszewski, Associate Dean of Health Careers and Sciences at the Metropolitan Campus at Cuyahoga Community College. And this is another segment of the Healthy Cooking Made Easy videotapes. Today we're going to be talking about squash and different kinds of squash. Squash is an excellent uh, vegetable. It has great versatility, um, but it can be a challenge to purchase because it has that hard skin on the outside and it can be difficult to know quite how to cook it. We're gonna be focusing on winter squash uh, for this segment as opposed to summer squash. Summer squash are like your zucchini where the skin is really thin and so you can eat the skin as opposed to these winter squash where we really need to work a little harder to make it edible. With me today is Chef Andy, a faculty member with the Hospitality Management Program. So Chef Andy, what are we working with today? So we have a butternut squash here today. Uh, we're going to be making two items out of this. The first one's going to be actual uh, oven cooked french fries. So instead of using a potato, we're going to use a butternut squash. Um, and then the other dish that we're going to make is candied butternut squash, which we're going to use the bottom bulbous part from. One thing you need to know about the squashes, uh, when you're going to do french fries, make sure you pick what I call a long necked one, which obviously you have a big large one here. Some of them are very short, they have more of a bulb here, and you don't want to pick those if you want to make french fries. What we're going to do is cut the front piece here and make french fries out of it and then save this section here, and we're going to make our candied uh, butternut squash. Now when you're doing the squash, when you're going to purchase it in the grocery store, there's really no way to tell if it's ripe or not, right? That's correct. They, they're yes. typically, if they're in the store, they're, they're typically ripe. Uh, we tend to grow a lot of these in our garden because they grow so easily and when they come off the vine easy, then we know they're, they're ripe. Um, there's nothing you can tell about color or pinching like you can right. with the other produce. It's not produce. soft. You want a hard, firm right. uh, squash. You want one that's not been dented or, or any bruises on it, and especially mold. If it has any of the bruises or mold on it, you know it's old and you really don't want to buy that. And this is the butternut squash as opposed to, and we'll talk about this one, this is your eggcorn squash. And these are the two primary winter squashes right. that we eat. And you can use them interchangeably, but as you can tell, this is a little bit harder to uh, cook because of the rigid um, skin as opposed to this one. So what is your first recipe for the... Uh, well, the first ones we're gonna do is uh, butter, butternut squash fries. So first thing we gotta do is obviously we're gonna cut the bulb off the bottom. Very hard, use a big knife. We're gonna save that for our candy. And then we're gonna try to peel this. Now, the challenge here is because it's hard, and you can hear that noise when you're going through with the knife, there's a couple ways you can do this. I like to use a sharp peeler. Now, there's different kinds. I, pre I prefer this one. You can use any kind that feels good in your hand, but a peeler is uh, my preference because it takes off the least amount of skin and you waste the least amount of uh, pulp in there. So, But it does, it does need to be a sharp peeler, right? The, a right. peeler like that you've been having in the house for you know five or six years may not be sharp enough to get this skin. And you have to press very firmly because it is, a, it is a very thick skin. So that's one way of doing it. The other way is you can take a small knife, you can use a paring knife, and you can go like this. The challenge with this here is, as you can see, you're gonna take off a little bit more skin than, than normal. But sometimes, if you don't have that, you have to do that. And one of the things you wanna remember is to have it on a flat, Right, it's, we, sure, it's securely anchored to the cutting board. We cut that on that purpose to right. make sure that we you don't have You can't cut it. it on an angle, but you really need to have it flat, so it makes it a little bit easier to peel. I prefer to do it this way. Even though you lose a little bit more of the flesh, um, there's so much flesh in there, it, uh, losing a little bit isn't really that big of a challenge. So this will take a um, couple minutes. Couple of minutes. But one of the nice things about squash is that a squash this size you can use for a couple of meals. So you can um, prepare it, get it ready to go, and then just put it in the refrigerator. So you just check and make sure you get most of that off. Remember, the skin is not palatable; it doesn't taste very good. So you want to get most of it off of there. So now you have pretty much a nice clean piece. So. As of any kind like french fries, whether you're coming up to a potato or whatever, you gotta make sure you have a solid piece. So what I try to do is just shave off a little piece here. Not much, just a little. So when you set it down, it doesn't roll, because when it rolls, you're gonna have a hard time cutting it. 
The challenge here is to get them the same width. Uh, it it's, you know, depends on your dexterity and how well you go. It's not that important on a finished product. They'll all cook together and they're pretty good. So. Another important part here is you do need to have a sharp knife. Having a dull knife is going to make it very difficult to cut and it's going to slip. But so, so what I did was here, I got down to this piece. I'm not continuing it because it's going to fall. So I'm going to turn it this way. And basically you can do that with potatoes and any kind of long tuber that you have. So as you can see, it's pretty solid here. And it kind of sticks when you cut it. Right. Kind it's of a little starchy in there. Yeah, yeah. So it sticks to so the So now line. you've got somewhat the same thickness. And then all you do is you can cut these as big or as small as you want. It just depends how big of a fry you want. You can actually cut them in half, too, if you need to. I like to have longer ones. But longer ones are better for dipping. Right, exactly. <laughs> Great color. So now you have the, the flat piece on here, so you solid and it doesn't move. One of the things I teach my students, you got to have the claw. If you go like this, the chances are you're going to cut your finger. That's kind of standard practice in the culinary world. This one here. So, so as you can see, one squash, you got you got probably got four portions, and you still have some left over for the candy one. So it's pretty pretty uh, good size and stuff. So. This is probably the simplest recipe you're ever going to have. You can use any kind of tray that you want. I chose to use a pie tin. You can use uh, spray on it. You can use a little bit of oil. Pam is good. And then you, you line this pan up with them. And you don't want to stack them in the pan. Right, right? it has they to be really flat. flat. They all have to be flat because you want right. them to cook evenly around. If you stack them, they won't cook evenly and they won't brown at all. So bottom line, you fill up your pan like this. Spray it again. You could put butter on there if you want. You can put a little more oil on there. And then uh, we like a little bit of salt and pepper. I will say uh, fresh ground pepper is always the best. Spices have a tendency to get old once they're ground. A lot of us have cabinets that are full of old spices that have probably been there several years and doesn't, doesn't have much life left to them. So, uh, word to the wise. So, now it's just ready to go in the oven. Uh, very and simple, very, very easy to do. And it goes in a hot oven. Right. Hot Four, oven, 425 degrees, so it's not like your typical 350, but it, the oven should be hot. Right. Right. So, you want me to put them yep, in the oven? In the in, oven. Let's see. Take these extras. And this is what the product looks like. These are our butternut squash fries. One of the reasons that Americans like this, they're sweet. And all it is, but they, in the culinary world, they call caramelization, which is nice and brown. That comes from the actual squash itself. There was no sugar put on here or nothing like that. Some of the other recipes we're going to augment it with sugar, but this is the, their natural state. And it, come, it came out nice and, and brown and stuff, and it really looks good. In the plate here, we have some honey for dipping. That's one of my favorites. So when they're done, you can use a spatula or you can use a, a, a tong like I'm using here and basically put them on there. And you know they're done because they, they're kind of brown. Right. Right? And we didn't even turn these over. You can turn them over right. halfway in the cooking if you wanted a little bit more caramelization. Um, and these are, are great. Nutritionally sound, low fat, high vitamin A, lots of fiber. Um, and they're just good to eat. Your typical um, sweet fry, usually these are sweet potato. But the sweet potato doesn't have the nutrients and the, and the goodness that uh, butternut squash has. And sometimes they get a little wimp, wimpy, right? right? They're soft. These are a little bit firmer, and I like the fries yeah. a little bit firmer. Right. Yeah. So we're saying they use these for an appetizer, but it could be a side dish. could be almost anything. Mm -hmm. They look good. Yeah. That's a great color. Okay, thank yeah. you. And what were you going to do with the um, bottom part? Well, the bottom part, we're going to make the candied uh, caramelized butternut squash. So basically, as you can see, it's round like this, and you can't really cut fries out of there. So we're going to go ahead and cut the bottom off, cut it in half. Ah, 
Seeds. And here's your seeds. So right. the bottom line is all of the seeds have to come out so you have like a little pouch and it's very similar to different squashes and stuff that you have. So what I like to use is a spoon. Those of you who like the birds out in the backyard, you can put that out there and they'll eat those seeds for you. Or they're similar to pumpkin seeds, any right. kind of squash seed. Um, you could always uh, clean them up and, and uh, roast them in the oven if you wanted to. So these here, again, you can use the peeler, um, same scenario, but I like to use my knife. You notice I cut the bottom off, you can use it this way or you can do it this way, uh, but the bottom line is you're still gonna have to take the skin off. And sometimes with uh, the, this bulbous part and peeling it, you need to um, peel it from one end and then flip it over and, and go from the other end because it's tough to get around that, that corner. Yeah, well, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Yeah. You won't get the very bottom end of it. No. So you notice I got a few pieces there that are out. So. One of the things I, I always stress with the students when you're doing any kind of cutting, always away from you, because if it slips, obviously it, if it's towards you, you're gonna make a mistake. These squashes, because they're so tough, you have a tendency to slip. So you wanna be real careful with those. These are a great um, orange color, and so we know that um, anything produce, fruits or vegetables, the richer the color, the richer the nutrients. Um, no fat, even when we did the french fries, there was just so little fat that it makes it um, a great low fat item to eat, um, even more than occasionally because it's so low fat. So now we've gotten all the seeds out and I call a pith in the middle. Bottom line is we're gonna cut it up into smaller pieces. Doesn't really matter what size. You don't want them too small. So it's pretty easy as you can see. All different ways to do it. Remember always the flat side down so it doesn't roll around. Don't cut them like this because they're gonna wobble. And if they wobble, you're gonna cut yourself. And we don't want that. So now, we're gonna take our bowl. And it's important when you cut them, to cut them in similar size because you want them to cook at the same rate. So you, right, because you've right. been doing this for a long time, you kind of just naturally do that. But for some of us, it's, <laughs> we have to go back and recut some pieces to make sure they're all um, the similar size. A little kosher salt. Uh, I want to say a couple words about kosher salt. One, it's easily controlled, you, especially when you do it by hand. The other granulated salts are so concentrated, sometimes you put too much in it. It also contains less um, anticoagulant or anti-caking, which is uh, something that stops them from, from right. caking up when it's wet and because they're larger pieces, it doesn't have as much in there. It also doesn't have iodine. Now, some, that's a good thing for some people and a bad thing for others. Um, we do get our iodine from the salt, but those people who are allergic to it uh, basically uh, can have that. So, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Again, our fresh grind. And then in here we have brown sugar, and then we have the three spices in there. Um, but it's kind of real nice. So we toss them up, a little bit of butter over here. I'm gonna put a little more sugar in here. Just enough sugar, and it's brown sugar, um, just enough sugar to coat each piece. Um, granulated sugar is not gonna work. You really do need the flavor um, of the brown sugar. This is one of my favorite recipes. The roasted, uh, roasted squash. Brown sugar has a little remnants of molasses in it, and it's really flavorful. White sugar is nice and sweet, but it doesn't have any flavor. So, again, in the oven, basically, till it's nice and brown. Until when it's done, slightly brown, you put a toothpick in it. And it goes through soft or a fork. 
So. And these you might want to flip during the cooking time. Right, Again, right. a hot oven um, takes about 40, 45 minutes. And during halfway down, you might want to flip it so then you get caramelization on all right. sides. So I'm going to put this one in the oven yep. too. And here we go. So here's our finished product. Uh, we're going to serve this with the roast. We're going to do a, a pork chop. So we're going to serve it with that. But this is kind of what it looks like. And I'm going to show you how to take some of the sauce in there and actually make a sauce for the pork. Okay, good. So the other I want to call good squash, or the, the, the right color squash, is the acorn squash. But as you can see, the way the skin is, it's very difficult to peel. So nobody peels these for obvious reasons because it would be a real uh, difficult task. So normally everybody just bakes them either in slices or in pieces and stuff. Today I wanted to show uh, you basically a way where you can actually make smashed squash and basically what that is, we're going to roast it, take it out of the shell and then put it into a bowl and toss it up. Very similar to a puree but in more chunky flavor and a little bit better. This. These, these squashes come in all different sizes and shapes. If you were to take this round squash and put it on a plate, it would overpower it, be too big, it wouldn't look right. So when we make a, a smash piece, we're gonna, it's gonna look pretty good. So all of these squashes have the two ends cut off and then we gotta take seeds out. And again, the color of the squash really doesn't indicate whether it's ripe, ripe or, not. or not. Right, You know, um, I think we have one that's orange. And right. It just changes color as it sits in the, the cover. So we cut the ends off for a couple reasons. One is to get the knob out because it's inedible. The other one is so it sets up straight. So you try to go approximately halfway. And voila, so you get two halves. Now, again, we have our seeds, so. Eggcorn squash don't tend to be as orange as the butternut squash. They're usually a little paler. Same nutritional value, but they just, um, they don't have the pow and the color of the other squashes. And these seeds are easy to clean out. Right, so they don't, these are easier. Yeah. yeah, they're not that hard. Okay. So this is a very large squash. So as I mentioned earlier, hard to do a simple, simple portion, one portion or two. So this way here, when you make the smashed ones, you can divide it up in the right portions that you want. So we're gonna put these in here. This is a mixture of, of brown sugar. We have nutmeg, allspice, cinnamon. We're gonna actually put an extra little piece of nutmeg in there, nice fresh grated, because I like nutmeg. It's got a nice aromatic piece. So let's just show that one again. Okay, sure. so this is the nutmeg. And I, I like the nutmegs because they stay in the cupboard a long time without going bad or losing their flavor. Right. Right? And then um, are you gonna show this later? Yep. Okay. I'm gonna put the little brown sugar on here. So again, the spices in this right. were nutmeg, allspice, and a little bit of cinnamon, cinnamon. Yep. which really give it a nice You can vary good. you can vary that if you want, is right. nobody's married to those. If you happen that I don't really like allspice, you don't have to have it. We're going to put a touch of butter, not much. And then this is called a microplane, very sharp grater. Uh, it does real well on things like this, uh, large, large either spices or nuts. As Barb mentioned, these last a long time because they're whole. Uh, they can last years actually. Ground spices tend to die real quick uh, because once you grind them, the, the effervescence and the oils come out of it. So anyway, I'm gonna put a little bit on there. And this goes a long, long way. Oh, it does. That's all you need. <laughs> and that's really all you need. You got that nice odor and stuff. As soon uh, as you break that skin, you, right. you can smell it. Right. So this is gonna go in the oven. We're gonna bake it off. And uh, when it's soft, you know it's ready. Okay. Um, and again, a hot oven. Right, all right. of these have been at 400 degrees, right. so we don't have to pamper it. Right. Okay, you wanna work on the pork? Yep. So what we have here, we have a semi-hot pan. These are boneless pork chops, they're center cut loin chops. 
basically, how do you know the center cut? Well, they have no grizzle, there's no tail to them, there's no um, end cut looking pieces where it's all solid meat, has a little bit of fat, you want a little bit of fat because it gives flavor, but it also moistens it up. And if you noticed, the small little veins of fat, that's intermuscular and it gives it flavor and it tenderizes it. So this is gonna be very simple. All we're gonna do is salt and pepper. So we're gonna do fresh ground pepper. a Little bit of salt. And as I mentioned, we're gonna use some of the juices from the squash to actually put on top. So as you can see, you got a little bit of smoke, a little bit of heat. Remember, you want to brown stuff. You don't want to put it in a cold pan. You don't, you don't cook anything in a cold pan. And you can hear that sizzle, and that's what you're looking for. So we also are going to put a little bit on this side. So this, this preparation method here is very simple. We're going to brown on each side. It's going to go in the oven another 10 minutes and it'll be done. So the key here is a good, nice center cut piece of pork and you have uh, no tail, no sinew, no nothing. It's a really good uh, piece. And it's a relatively low fat compared to a high fat steak um, and it's nutritionally sound um, as opposed to um, fried food. Uh, we certainly right. eat a lot of pork. Um, exactly. Because of it, its leanness. Okay. So while this is cooking, um, we're going to take a look at spaghetti squash. Now, spaghetti squash is basically entirely different than the acorn uh, squash or the butternut squash. Spaghetti squash is more fibrous. It's a little loose, not as sweet. And they call it spaghetti squash because it looks like spaghetti. After so, it's cooked. After it's cooked. <laughs> I know. So here's, here's the actual squash itself. It still does have a very hard outside uh, skin, uh, but the way we're going to show you to prepare it, uh, you don't use the skin at all, and you scrape out the insides, and it comes out really nice. And they're always yellow. Right. Right. There. That's how you Correct. know it's a spaghetti squash. Yeah. It may right. not be. This one's not labeled, but it right. has this yellow color, which is very different than the other. They, they did have a label on it. I took it off uh, because we don't want to eat the label. But okay, so nice and brown. Okay, you want some nice color to it. That's a caramelization, gives you flavor, and that's going to go right in the oven. Yeah. Yep. So here is a, a squash that very good for you, very high in nutrition, good vegetable, and you can cook it in a microwave. Mm. A lot of chefs frown upon microwaves. I believe it has their uses. This is one of them. Anything that could be steamed or simmered or boiled works well in a microwave. So first thing you want to do is cut it in half. And again, we're going to uh, take out the inside. The skin on the spaghetti squash isn't really as tough as the butternut or egg corn squash, so it's a little bit easier to, easier to cut. It's still pretty tough, though, and it's not wimpy, so you need a sharp, sharp knife. knife yeah. Actually, you need a sharp knife for anything you do, but that's always a chef talking. Nobody, nobody cuts themselves with sharp knives, they cut themselves with dull knives. Okay, so you get the seeds out. Hey. So once you get it to this point, I took the liberty of salt and peppering these. You could put a little bit of butter or olive oil in there like the recipe says. And you wrap it in film, you punch a few holes in it, and you put it in the microwave for about 20 minutes. And it comes out nice, hot, steamy, and, and uh, very, very easy to do. This is probably one of the easiest squashes to, to cook or any kind of vegetable to prepare. You want to see the one? Yes, that's sure. Cooked. So here's what it looks like when it's done. It's got a, you can feel it's soft, somewhat translucent uh, kind of scenario. All we have in here is salt and pepper. 
We're going to serve it actually with tomato sauce, a little cheese. Like I said, you could put a little butter in there or some olive oil. So we're going to take this apart. One of the things uh, when you do cook these in a microwave, they do shrink up. So. Now I, I also at home will sometimes do it in a um, a casserole with a lid, and just put it in the microwave oven um, if I don't want to use the saran wrap. With the saran wrap, this really um, steamed basically. Most homes don't have a steamer, so there's your difference here. So. The thing you really need is a fork, and it's one of the coolest things that I've seen. So what you do is you kind of pull this, and what you have is strings that look somewhat like thin spaghetti. Only it's um, a good kind of carbohydrate. It's not your white starch carbohydrate like you right. carbohydrate like you'd find in uh, pasta. This is a whole lot more fiber than um, your pasta. And don't, oh. don't be afraid to go all the way to the skin because it comes all out. Right. And you can almost get two servings right. out of um, a whole squash. Right. So there's a lot of different applications. As the recipe said, anything that you do with spaghetti, you could do with this. Mm -hmm. um, the all-American favorite, of course, is tomato sauce. So we're going to take a little bit of tomato sauce here. Great vegetarian dish, obviously. Yep, it is. Um, I'm going to take the liberty of putting a little cheese on it uh, because I like cheese. It's over there. Yep, it looks great. Ooh. So nice, healthy, easy to do. 20 minutes in a microwave. Uh, no dirty dishes, <laughs> uh, nothing to clean up and stuff. And again, even if you have a leftover piece like this, just wrap it and heat it up the next day and it's, it's still good to use. And again, we use tomato sauce, but you can do any kind of sauce that you and would you like. you can use a meat sauce. You can use a meat this sauce. Is, this would be purely vegetarian. You, know, you can put some added vegetables in there if you want. Sometimes I'll do roasted vegetables. Right. Uh, but you can do a meat sauce if, you're, if you don't want to be totally vegetarian or a right. piece of chicken or something, right? Right. right. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's a really nice dish. Okay, so you're ready for the egg corn squash and um, Correct. see what that looks like. And your meat. Yeah, just set that down. So here we have it fully baked. You got a light of nice caramelization, some of the spices that are in there, really good flavor. Um, one of the great things about this is you get a lot of good flavor out of it without a lot of calories. There's, there's a very little small amount of butter, not much at all, um, but as you can see, it's nice and dark. It's got that nice caramel flavor. So real simple. The juices in the middle you want to save, and then you're just going to scoop it out. One of the great things, again, you don't have to peel these. That's definitely a way to, a way to go, <laughs> bake it. Um, baking certainly gives squash a different kind of flavor than in the microwave. You know, if you were right. in a rush, you could microwave this just like you did uh, the uh, spaghetti squash. That's correct. Right? Wrap it in uh, saran wrap and put it in the microwave oven, probably 15 or 20 minutes, and it would be soft and you can scoop it out. But you would miss out on some, it would be just a different flavor. Yeah. So the recipe says a potato masher, but you know what? You can use a spoon, you can use a fork, you can do a lot of different things. So what you've got is that nice caramel note from the sugar. And you've got a lot of nice spices in there. So really, there it is, smashed. Right, and you saved the juice. Right. So it was good to save the juice. Yep. <laughs> so it adds, just makes it a little bit less dry right. too. Yep. So why don't you bring the pork out. We're going to actually make a couple plates here, one with uh, the smashed and then one with the caramelized. I took the liberty of taking a little bit of uh, asparagus. We're just going to heat that up in hot water um, for this here. So again, remember that squash was huge. So when you're looking at portions, if you do this here, you can, you can uh, actually portion it out accordingly. 
you're not stuck to the size of the squash. We'll go ahead and use this here. So, put a little here. Little here. You ready for the asparagus? Yep. I'm gonna take this off. Oh, they're a little wet. That's okay, they'll come off. So, set them down. So, we, it's here. Now this is my kind of plate, right? The orange, right. the deep yellow, and green. <laughs> you can't get much healthier than this. So and a little we, bit of meat. Right. So, you know, we've got this here. We're going to put our pork like so. And then, what I really like about this is we're going to take the sauce for the pork is going to be the juice from the squash, we put that over the top. So you got a little sweetness to it. You don't have to worry about too much cooking altogether. And what you end up with is a, a nice, attractive plate. It looks great. Looks great, tastes good. You get two different squashes, make you famous. Right, great job. So what you want to remember that this, don't be afraid of the squash, the, especially those with the hard skins, those winter squash. Just take your time, sharp knife, flat edge, peel it, microwave it, bake it, roast it, very versatile and very healthy.